So, everyone, look at your screen on your lots of you have Premiere open. Look at Premiere for a second and ask yourself, am I square or am I rectangle? Okay? If you're not, if you're neither, right? Some of you haven't started your sequence because you've been waiting for my instruction. If you're rectangle, great, just watch. You, you've been doing it right. So if you want, if you're like square and you'll notice your footage is really, really cropped, right? Your footage is really cropped. It's because you forgot to change the sequence settings or you threw your song in first. So your, your premiere or your sequence went, sweet, I don't have to change anything because the song obviously doesn't have any video. So this is obviously the sequence settings that you want. So there's a couple of things. This is when you, this is the, this happens because you didn't choose that prompt or because you put music in first. Okay. Can you change it without starting over? Yes. Here's the long hard way, right? If I go here to sequence and I go to sequence settings, I can change all these settings. And I just want to talk about these settings for a second, right? So I'm going to get out of QuickTime and I'm going to go to custom. So I switch this to custom and then I can switch my frame size here to 1920 to 1080. Raise your hand if 1080 sounds familiar. No one hears about 1080. It's like all your HDTVs. Oh, it's 1080, right? Um, so this is 16 by nine. 1080 refers to 1080 pixels tall, right? So 1080 is how many how many pixels are in the height of that image, right? So 4K is actually getting to four whatever this times four is. 4K is not actually 4,000. It's 4,008 times 4, 4,240 pixels. But they just started rounding down, right? Because who wants to say 4,240, right? This is a mouthful. Um, your pixel, pixel aspect ratio is going to be square which means every pixel is a square, okay? And then fields are gonna be no fields, that's progressive. How many of you have heard of 1080p or 1080i? Right, so P stands for progressive, which means it gives you the entire image in one frame blink. I means interlace, and you're not, that means you're actually getting half frames, and I'll, I'll talk more about that later. And then frames per second, you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna choose, oops, not frames per second, that should be frames. Oh, where's my, ah, right here, time code, sorry, up here where it says time code, I want to choose 59.94 frames per second, not 60. Even though the camera is set to 60, you're really filming at 59.94. And that should do it. Now that's a lot of work, right? That's a lot of stuff to remember if you're not a compression expert, right? But um, that's what that little trick I showed you with the montage is doing. So if I wanted to, I hit okay, this will be set now. It says, hey, you wanna change it? I say yes, but now that fits, right? Now that fits. Instead of just being cropped at standard definition, now that fits. And that, that's the way we wanna work. Now, that was a lot of steps. Here's the other way if your sequence is square. I'm gonna undo it. And this is why we do that prompt. So I'm gonna grab all my footage, all of my footage, I'm going to hit Command X, and then I'm going to go to my footage here. I'm going to grab any piece of footage and prompt it and dump it in there like this. This question, and I say change sequence settings, does all the work I just demonstrated right here, right? So by saying, yes, change the sequence settings, you don't have to do any of that manually. Why would you want to do that manually? There's reasons for later, right? But for right now change the sequence settings, boom, right? And it changes that automatically, okay? That's how that works. So that's why we do that prompt. Oh yeah, I still gotta get my original footage back. So then I hit Command V and my footage is all back in place. So I hit Command X to copy it and delete it. I threw in any piece of footage to reset my settings and then I'm good to go. So you should always know how to have this rectangle. I've shown you two ways. Okay, rewind, zip, 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 zip. Um, so to start your new sequence, people that have just opened up Premiere, you're gonna go File, New Project. If you haven't called it Silent Short, call it Silent Short. And then you can take your footage and you can just drag it all in. This is all old montage footage, 
right here. It takes a moment and make sure that's all playable. Now, once you've connected, once you've connected your footage to your timeline, once you, to your project, excuse me, don't move or change it. Do not rename anything. Don't change the folder. Um, otherwise, you're going to get a red box that says, can't find your footage. It's easy to fix as long as the footage is on your machine. Okay? So just don't rename it. Don't change it. Don't move it once you've put it in Premiere. If you do, you break the chain and it, gets re it, 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 it doesn't know where to find the footage. So the footage doesn't live in Premiere. It still lives on your desktop. Right? So this song lives on my desktop. If I were to change the song, rename the song, do anything different to that song, it does not live right here. It lives on my desktop and it's just a reference, it's a point, all right? Um, we'll talk more about that later. Okay, last couple of steps. So I've got my footage, I've got my song. So it's gonna be very similar to the montage, except instead of just choosing random images, you're choosing deliberate images. But let me just kind of review everything. I'm gonna go file, new, Sequence, I'm gonna call it silent short rough. If you just called it silent short, that's fine. Okay, there's my sequence. Notice it went back to being standard definition. I can grab, then I wanna grab any piece of footage and prompt it to say change sequence settings. This way, uh, this way I don't have to uh, do all the set manual settings that I was showing you. All right, then I'll take my song. I'll plot my song in. People are asking, can I take multiple songs? Yes, how do I trim those songs? I could double click my song up here, make an endpoint. Let's say I don't want this buildup. It's a pretty big buildup, right? Let's say I go right here to this little silent spot. I can press what? What do I press for it to come in? I, thank you very much. And then I'll just use this chunk of the song right there. Oh, oops, oh, right? So I and O, get rid of this guy. To drag this portion in, for audio, you can't grab up here. You have to grab down here and plop it in like so. So now I have a, just a portion of the song. I can mix and match. I can crossfade. I'll just, if you want a different song or a different part, I and O it again, I, O, and drag that part in for the next track. Oops, drag that part in for the next track, right? Then you're gonna wanna mark the song. If you notice on the rubric that I pointed out to on Canvas, like timing, there's like three or four things mentions of timing. So you might want to do what we did with the montage and mark up the song, or you could also enlarge your waveforms here by going like that. A lot of you are still working in squint mode, right? Squint mode really bothers me because I'm old, right? So if you grab this line right here, you can make these bigger or smaller. And don't forget, you can zoom in here. And you can start to see the beats. You can start to see the gaps in the places of time in the music, too. So I'm not requiring you to, to um, mark up a song. I'm suggesting it. The button is M. You play through it. I went techno this time. Right? And you can just press M and mark places where the song changes, where the beat drops, etc. Right? So you have some good reference points. All right. Last thing I want to remind you of, bringing your footage in, okay? Remember, you can make in and out points here, I and O. You can also make in and out points here. This is just your montage footage if you don't recognize it. Let's do it right like that. I, O. If you want to remove the audio right away, so if I were to drag this in here and choose overwrite, that for right now it's gonna delete the song right to make it really easy I can uncheck a1 here right unplug that and now when I drag this in it's not gonna have any audio attached to it so that's the easiest way to do it it's right here to the left of the lock it's the a1 on the left it used to be capital a1 lowercase a1 it's a kind of preferred um, but that's not how it is. Now, you notice this clip is way shorter than my in and out point. So remember, when I drag it to overwrite, it gives me these options. It could change the speed. It'll make it slow motion if it's shorter. 
fast motion. If it's not, I'm going to ch choose change of speed. Or it, can, it says, which one do you want to ignore? The in point, the out point, the sequence in point, or the sequence out point. So either the in and out point here or the in and out point there. Right? So I'm going to hit OK. This one's called fit to fill. And that makes it slow motion. So now, right? So that's what you're doing. You're gonna do in points, out points, drop in that audio, and you're going to um, place your storyline, your shots in order to kind of tell a story. If you want to try to mix it up and do some fancy stuff, that's fine. I'm gonna be going over a lot more stuff, speed changes, all these other little tricks. Don't worry, we'll cover it. But the first, your first goal should be to kind of have a nice rough outline of your movie by, by tomorrow. Let's say tomorrow. So by the end of Friday, you should have a rough cut. That's what they call it. A rough cut of your, of your sequence with everything in there. What was that? How do I get rid of audio that I've already attached? Great question. Someone's going to ask that, right? Remember, if you have audio here that's stuck, right click and choose unlink. Now the audio and the video are no longer linked together. I can delete that. And then I can pull this back in and fuse my song together. Got it? So unlink to get rid of the audio you already have. Questions? So in and out, I know. Spacebar is play pause. M marks. JKL goes play forward, play backwards. Uh, Oops, sorry. Carson, Carson? Carson had a really good uh, question that I wanted to point out. If you use the up and the down arrow, the up and the down arrow quickly snap to the next cut. It's a great way of navigating, right? So if you hit up and you hit down, that's an easy way to jump between each clip on your timeline. Left and right arrow go frame by frame. So if you needed to get really precise, and if you have audio scrubbing on, you can actually kind of hear the song as you scrub. So I want to hear that one beat, right? So you can kind of, if you really need to get a particular beat or something, left and right air are also very helpful. So up, down, good. Left, right, good. Space, but M, I think I've covered everything. We've all done this already with the montage. It's basically the montage, but with the story. Get to it.